Welcome back to Blockchain Pill, my name is Alex and today we'll go over what's been happening on the Internet Computer Protocol the previous week and I have to admit it's a pleasant feeling to be part of the ICP ecosystem. First of all, let's have a look at the weekly price chart and we have finally broken out of where we have been consolidating for the past month and we're currently sitting at $5.50. If we break out from here, like there is no stopping us until like $10. We're finally seeing some relief. And after this long bear market, we are finally seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Let's have a look at what the projects inside the ecosystem have been doing. There is a huge project coming to the Internet Computer Protocol. Goldau brings physical gold ownership to Web3. You can now own gold as NFTs backed by real gold stored in a secure vault in Switzerland and no longer have to worry about storing, insuring and securing physical gold. The gold is provided by Metalore and audited by KPMG. This is one of the first applications of NFTs backed by real world assets, which is a huge step forward. With that in mind, Goldau just launched a proposal to begin the SNS decentralization swap. The team mentioned that 80% of the ICP raised through the SNS will be staked for eight years and intending to raise 1 million ICP. That means that 800 ICP will be out of the market and yielding 60% per year which is around 130,000 ICP or $700,000 at the current ICP price per year, which is enough cash flow to ensure the growth and sustainability of Goldau for many, many years to come. And on top of that, that is another 1 million ICP off the markets and locked into the SNS, which I think is very bullish. If we get like 10 or 20 more projects like this, 20 more million ICP will be off the markets and suddenly there is not enough ICP to go to everybody. So let's have a look at the tokenomics. There will be 1 billion tokens in total, 200 million or 20% are allocated to the SNS swap, 180 million allocated to the team and 600 million or 62% of the supply are allocated for the treasury to be governed by the gold DAO token holders, which is pretty good. On top of that, there is a series of interviews done by gold DAO that I recommend you go watch to learn more about this project. Hi, uh, my name is Vincent Peria. I'm uh, one of the uh, three co-founders of Origin Foundation. We've got a refreshed look for the Internet Computer website, which I think looks pretty good. We can see the most important stats like transactions per second and blocks processed right at the top of the website. And on top of that, there is an AI chatbot. You can ask it any question you have regarding the ICP ecosystem and some of the projects on the Internet Computer Protocol, and it will give you answers about those. Is the Internet Computer decentralized? And let's see what it says. So yes, the Internet Computer is decentralized, and then we have, you know, all these answers. I assume this is a decentralized AI as well. So we can see that working on the Internet Computer Protocol. The site looks pretty good. I think this is a welcome change. You can now mint and trade CK ETH directly in Plug Wallet. Simply connect your MetaMask from within Plug Wallet, input the amount of ETH that you want to turn into CK ETH, sign the transaction in MetaMask and you're ready to go. Now we just need a few teams to build something cool with CK ETH like Bionic did with CK BTC. And we'll finally see crazy utility and the power of CK ETH on the Internet Computer Protocol. SNS1 turned one year old last week and this has been such a cool journey for this token and for the whole ICP ecosystem in general. SNS1 launched as the first test project through ICP's SNS platform and a few thousand people managed to buy it for one ICP per token. Later, Dragons came and took over the project and the price skyrocketed to almost 1000 ICP as the team kept releasing updates and building up their MMORPG. Today, we're sitting at well over 400 ICP the team has released Middleland, a preview of all the updates and mechanics that players were able to test until December 10th. I'm looking forward to seeing Dragons continue their journey in 2024 and beyond. I think that this is going to be one of the biggest games on the Internet Computer Protocol, and who knows, maybe in all of crypto. BoomDAO announced the Boom Game Makers Alliance, an initiative aimed at fostering the development of fully on-chain games within BoomDAO's world protocol. It focuses on two pillars, synergy and collaboration, and provides technical and growth support. The Alliance emphasizes cross-game collaborations and commits to fostering network effects collectively, offering benefits such as ongoing technical support, milestone-based compensation, and access to gaming guilds. This will connect games built using the BoomDAO's infrastructure and you will be able to complete quests in one game and receive rewards in a different one. I think this is a great opportunity for all the games that are part of BoomDAO basically to get visibility and new players coming and playing those games. So I, I really love those news. The December Motoko Bootcamp has started. Yesterday marked the first day of the December Motoko Bootcamp 
the developers networked with one another, formed teams, and were introduced to Web3 and the Motoko coding language. For the next seven days, they will learn the ins and outs of Motoko, and by the end of the bootcamp, each of them will have built a fully on-chain functioning DAO. We had Sebastian, the education lead at Code and State and the founder of Motoko Bootcamp on our podcast, and we delve deeper into what the Motoko Bootcamp is about, so make sure you check this video out if you haven't already. Bionic is the world's fastest and most user-friendly ordinals marketplace and launchpad that leverages CKBTC, a Bitcoin twin developed on the Internet Computer Protocol, which allows fast speeds and negligible transaction costs. And we've seen over 60,000 CKBTC transactions totaling 75 CKBTC since the Bionic Ordinals Marketplace went live last week. And those numbers are insane because it's only been one week since Bionic has been up and 60,000 CKBTC transactions, that is more than anything else that has been done with CKBTC. So congratulations to Bionic. You guys have been breaking records. If you'd like to learn more about Bionic and Ordinals in general, we've covered it more in depth in the previous week episode. So make sure you check that one out. OpenChat announced that you are now able to swap tokens directly from your OpenChat wallet. OpenChat queries the DEXs to get the best exchange rate and then your canister does the swap on your behalf. Which is pretty cool, you no longer have to exit the app and to go to your favorite DEX to transfer your funds to the DEX and then back into your OpenChat wallet, you can now do it directly from the wallet itself, which I think is a huge improvement. The team also announced a new membership tier called Gold Diamond. This is a lifetime membership that has all the features of the normal diamond, but it's a one-time payment costing 6 ICP instead of 1.5 ICP per year. Catalyze announced version 2.0. Some of the upcoming features are advanced airdropping tools, in-app access to NFT marketplaces, neuron-gated communities, and wallet integration. All those features are very welcome and are actually a necessity for a social platform. So Catalyze, great job for those updates. Sonic, the number one decentralized exchange on the Internet Computer Protocol announced that they now support CK ETH swaps. So last week we had the inauguration of CK ETH and now it is tradable on ICP DEXs. And the team announced a promotion to attract liquidity to the CK ETH and ICP pair. And that has worked well since there is currently close to $200,000 available. You gotta love a promotion when you see one. Sonic definitely knows their stuff. Sonic announced that they will delist tokens that are not managed properly. As you may know, ICP has a reverse gas fee model, meaning that that the end user doesn't have to pay fees as we've seen with all other blockchains out there. Instead, the token creators need to make sure that there are enough funds in the smart contract canister to cover for all of the transactions. And failure to do so will result in the token being delisted from the Sonic exchange since users risk losing their assets and Sonic doesn't want any part in that. And with that, we're done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.